Hey guys, got another pin video here for you, and um, I'm still waiting on uh, four fountain pins to show up. It's actually four, and uh, two of them have cleared customs. One of them cleared customs ten days ago and still has not moved any further. Uh, another one seven days ago, and I know it's that time of year, it's the holiday season, uh, but it's kind of been the common theme lately with a lot of pins I've ordered. Um, two out of the four pins I ordered actually the very first of December, um, and they're still not here yet. So it's almost been a month, but you know, I'm anxiously awaiting for, uh, all four pins to show up. Like I said, I'm actually really excited about two of them. The other two are, are I think going to be interesting reviews as well, but I've got this guy here in front of you, and this is the wing sung two, three, three, or some people may even call it the hero two, three, three. Now, this is a pin that I've actually had for quite a while now, and um, I really haven't used it much. I have kind of taken it apart a little bit and um, thought that it'd be interesting to do a review on. Um, it's definitely not a pen aesthetically to write home about, uh, somewhat of a bland style, so to speak. It is that kind of classic Parker 51 design with that torpedo shaped body. Um, but it's a design that you've seen with a lot of pens and obviously they've updated this kind of design with the Wingsung 601 and I'll kind of compare this with that pen along with a couple others here uh, momentarily. But let's look at this pen. So looking at the uh, cap here, you'll notice that the first thing about the cap is it actually has some texturing to it. Uh, almost like uh, engraved lines throughout the entire length of the cap, really starting up at the top portion right here, and then moving the all the way down to about right there. And you can see them through the video. Now, of course, it's torpedo shape, so the, the cap finial up here is that cone shape. Now, looking at the clip, you'll notice uh, we've got kind of a, a nice shaped clip here. One of the cool things about it is it is actually spring-loaded. I think it's kind of a, a, a nice design. It's not something you would think of when you see a pen like this, especially at this price point. Uh, this pen um, is actually retails for around $5. Um, and you can get it in other colors besides black. I think there's like four or five different colors. Um, and I paid, I think, $4.90 something for this pen. Of course, it was free shipping. But the clip works very well. You'll notice it opens up very wide. Um, it's got decent tension, but of course, with it being spring-loaded, it it's very easy to just pull back and forth, and it just pops right back into place. So I think it's a really cool design. Now, working our way down towards the bottom of the cap, you'll notice that we've got some Chinese characters here, and we've got the model number 233. Flipping it over to this back side, we see Wing Sung, of course. And then moving our way down the barrel, there's nothing really on the barrel as far as any other distinguishing markings or anything to let you know any what brand pen this is, for instance. Just a simple black plastic barrel. Now you will notice at the end of this barrel, there is actually a cutout there, so and it is completely through the pen. So one thing to note, this is not a pen that you're going to be eye-dropping or anything like that, of course. Now, taking this cap off, of course, it is just a pop-off cap, and it's kind of a, a nice design. It, it feels nice and sounds nice when you put the cap back on. You hear that clip? You definitely get some resistance there, and I have noticed it, as you move around this pin, the cap kind of pulls up just a tad bit. You can see that opening there, but it, it once it's on there, it really isn't going anywhere. It does make me wonder, because of this cap moving back and forth, will the uh, pen seal properly? I don't know if anyone else has had issues with this as far as there being a slight gap there. Again, it goes all the way. As you move the pen around and do things with it, possibly like in your shirt pocket, that portion starts to uh, separate. Now, taking this cap off reveals that section and nib. Now, the nib is very much so like the Wingsung 601A. Um, it is a wraparound styled nib, um, very similar to the Schaefer Triumph, of course. 
Um, I think, again, kind of an interesting design. I have cleaned this pen out. Um, so if you notice, there's a little bit of uh, moisture there, of course, in the feed here. Um, just a, a standard plastic feed, but interesting design. The section, there is a slight step down right here to this ink window. And yes, I did say an ink window. The ink window is kind of a amber or orangish color to it or, or, or hue to it. And I think to me, it, I think they're kind of, we're going, uh, at least I'm speculating that a design kind of to make it look somewhat vintage, of course. So I think it's an interesting little design. I, I know some reviews I was reading online, you know, people were complaining about it, that it didn't look very nice and things like that. But hey, it is what it is. Um, and I have inked this pen up at, before and I wrote with it just briefly and then I put it away and then eventually cleaned it out and haven't really written with the pen very much either. And I'll show you, there was actually, um, I'll show you the filling mechanism on this pen and some issues that I had with it when I disassembled it that I was a little bit concerned about. And, you know, the barrel just completely unscrews and it reveals that uh, push filler or aerometric filler. And this metal sleeve, of course, comes all the way off. And uh, I'm not going to take it off yet. I'll show you guys here in a moment. But of course, there is a clear uh, rubber sack here. And when I had taken this portion off, I'm assuming either maybe someone was, was messing with this, uh, maybe inspecting it, but when they push this metal uh, piece back onto that rubber sack, they had actually crinked, crunched up the, the actual rubber sack. And I'll show you guys that here momentarily. Um, you know, this is a very, I would say, outdated filling mechanism, of course. Um, kind of rather it be like a, a cartridge converter filling mechanism. Um, but, you know, it is what it is. I mean, you can't really complain for a pen that costs less than $5. So I thought it'd be interesting to kind of show the in, inner parts of the cap. So you'll notice that we've got these metal kind of uh, springs here. And that kind of acts as your, um, your tension to snap that cap into place. That gives you that really nice uh, seal. You notice that you've got your plastic inner cap liner there. So I would think that this nib would uh, seal up really nicely. You know, the one thing I would wonder is with that uh, cap kind of moving a little bit, would that impact the overall seal of this nib? <clears throat> now looking at the barrel, just to kind of show you guys that it does go all the way through to the other side. So this again is not a pen that you're going to be eyedroppering or anything for that matter um, because you've got that hole down there at the bottom. So barrels just completely hollowed out. Um, the threads are machined into the plastic. So nothing super special to write home about on that. So here we can actually see the uh, pen um, pretty much completely disassembled. And you'll see where I was talking about on this uh, rubber kind of clear sack here. Now I do have some talc powder on here and you'll notice that of course I've got some residue on my uh, little pin tray here. And that's from me actually putting this on there. There wasn't any on it um, before and I don't know if maybe, I don't know if there was supposed to be. Um, if you guys have disassembled your pins and, and seen it on there or not, or if you guys have seen this as being an issue. Now, you know, as far as being able to fill it, I haven't had any issues. I don't really have any rubber sacks laying around and I didn't really feel like messing with this pen. Again, it's less than $5. I'm going to let it be. It still was holding water fine and I'm pretty certain it's going to hold ink fine. So, and if I have any issues, it's I'm not going to be really that upset. Um, you know, again, here's the metal collar that covers uh, this portion of the pen. And um, here is the actual feed. I think it's an interesting feed design, of course. You'll see we've got our cutouts for our breather tubes there. The uh, one breather tube goes all the way through the middle section here, and then you'll see 
where that ink draws straight up into the uh, pen. And then of course we have our two breather tubes here. And then I think kind of one of the coolest parts about this is this wraparound nib. I do know that you can order other nibs online, but it just screws right into place. Didn't have too much trouble getting this nib off at all. Um, I mean, it was a little bit tight initially. One thing when you reassemble this, you do have to kind of play around with the feed here and make sure that it's lined up properly. And um, the feed just, it doesn't screw in or anything, but it just simply just, it's friction fit, goes straight down. You'll notice that you have these threads here and your uh, nib just screws right onto those threads. And again, you just have to make sure everything's lined up. It, I mean, it takes a couple practice tries and then after that, you're good to go. Um, very easy to disassemble though. I didn't really have too many problems with it at all. Um, so as far as cleaning the pen, I think it's a pen that you can easily clean. Obviously your breather tubes, those are gonna really discolor over time. Anybody that's worked with vintage pens knows that. Um, I'm sure if these, if you have issues as far as them breaking down over time, I'm sure you can get replacements fairly easily. And um, I will be changing out this sack at some point. It's just not something I'm worried about right now. So again, interesting pin overall. I think for a, a pin in this price range, kind of gives you that little bit of that vintage feel, which I think is interesting. Um, aesthetically, it's a really exciting pin, but again, I think it's interesting all the same. So here guys, we have uh, some sizing comparisons here and um, starting from the bottom, working our way to the top, we have our Wingsung 233 here. Um, and then we've got a Wingsung 601. Uh, this is the transparent version with that uh, pump styled filler. We've got another Wingsung 601 with the black uh, body and this has got the diaphragm filler with that rubber sack. And then we have the Jinhao 51A up at the top here. It kind of gives you an idea of sizing. Now you'll notice that overall the Wingsung 2 through 3 is just slightly longer than these three pens. And mainly that's because you've got a pen that is more cone shaped than these other uh, three that you see here. Now here we see this is kind of where the sizing really changes. Um, now we've got your other three completely uncapped along with the 233 and you'll notice that the 233 is actually the shortest pin out of these four. Um, the three on top are all relatively about the same size whereas the 233 definitely has a shorter barrel and overall body length. And um, I prefer these three of course as far as their overall length and balance in the hand. Um, this is a very light pen. I will put the uh, weight of this pen in the right below, as well as the overall dimensions of the pen also. Now, you'll notice once you post this pen, it definitely holds its own against the other three. Um, it does post deeply because it's such a light pen and the cap is not very heavy at all. It's definitely well balanced, but I'll give all four of these pens um, they all are very well balanced and really it's testament to the design of the, the pen, just like the Parker 51 and other Parker models with the same style design. Uh, you get a cap that posts deeply, it's balanced well, and um, you can write with it unposted or posted. This pen is on the shorter side. Um, again, I'm going to put the dimensions and I'll kind of show you guys, but you know, as far as how it fits in my hand, you know, I can write with this pen unposted comfortably, but I think if you're someone that has a much larger hands than I do, you're definitely going to have to post this pen um, in order to write with it comfortably. All right, so up next, guys, we're going to do the writing sample, and I'm going to ink this up, guy up first, do the writing sample, and then we'll kind of finish up from there. I'll give you guys my conclusion and my overall thoughts of the pen. Be back in a moment. All right, guys, back for the writing sample here. And I was going to show the ink that we're using real quick. This is the uh, Birmingham Pen Company, and this is the Grandview Avenue Midnight Horizon ink. Say that five times fast. It's kind of a, a blue-black ink, and um, ink I haven't used very often, but I need to use more of. It's It's got a nice, uh, nice color to it. I really like the ink. All right, let's see how this bad boy writes. So the, again, this is the Wingsung 
two, three, three. You know, the nib's got some feedback to it. I'd say more like a, a pencil-y type feedback. I would say it's somewhat of an extra fine nib. You know, moder moderately wet rider. Um, you know, not too bad in that aspect. You can kind of see the, the ink there. Let's get a sentence on the paper. You know, again, I would say decent ink flow. It's not a pen that you're going to get really any line variation because, of course, the style of the nib and, and how it is that wraparound nib can't really flex those tines, really. Um, but, you know, again, decent writing experience. Not the smoothest nib in the world, but, you know, not bad. And you can probably hear some of that feedback but you know all in all i would say a pleasant writer um, it's it's very lightweight again i'm going to put the uh, weights and the dimensions of this pen in the description a pen again i think you can comfortably write with uh, posted and it's it's because it's so lightweight you really don't know the difference of having that cap on it but overall a solid writer you know as far as my final thoughts on the pen it, it doesn't really it's not a pen that just really calls to me aesthetically. The nib is decent. I wouldn't say it's a, a great writer by any means. Um, I definitely think it's an interesting design from a vintage perspective. I think the nib is interesting. It does make me want to now purchase the Wingsung 601A and try it out. I know a lot of people really like that pen, so I will probably be getting one of those. I think if you're somebody that really likes vintage pens, you might like this pen. It's kind of cool to tinker around with and take it apart. And um, the writing experience is not horrible. It's definitely a pen that you could throw in your bag as a backup pen. I think this could be a great backup pen for the price. Again, I paid around $5, but I'm pretty sure you can get it for cheaper. So, guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. Hopefully, by next week, one of my pens have come. If not, I've got a couple more review ideas in the meantime. Hope everyone is having an amazing holiday season. I probably won't see you guys until 2019. So take care and I will talk to you guys later. Bye-bye. Mm -hmm.